Hello and welcome to another episode in the War 4X C Sharp uh, tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be going over again ship design. In this, especially, we're going to be going over military ship design, uh, the very basics, mechanics, and answering a few questions. Feel free to head to the chapters below where you can skip forward to different parts if you want to just look at. Uh, specific things that may interest you as I will be adding those accordingly. But in today's episode, we are going to be asking and answering three questions. Number one, what are military vessels? Number two, why are they used? And number three, design considerations about military vessels um, and things you want to consider when thinking about and designing them. We will be building on this in future episodes. But in today's episode, we're going over, going over the basic mechanics of the ship um, and the design of it um, and military ships in general. So let's start. But before we get into it, um, I do want to say thank you for the recent really positive growth and subscriber growth. And everyone's really enjoying the episodes. I hopefully will be at a thousand very, very soon. Um, yeah. And also, um, I will be making more videos coming out with military ship design philosophy and also military uh, ship design kind of walkthrough. So I'll basically be doing, I'll be designing a military ship for you guys and just kind of showing you the process of doing it to kind of help you guys understand it more. Um, so let me know if you want to see that and and, and, and how, how, you, how you want to kind of see that implemented and, and stuff. So let's go. What are military vessels? A military vessel is a ship that you design in, for example, the class design window that has a military component that makes it a military vessel. Military components can be anything from geological survey sensors to weapons such as missiles, particle beams, um, carronades, railguns, and much more. It can also include stuff like sensors and uh, magazines, hangars, and much more. For example, any sensor above size 1 is a military sensor. Any uh, design, any, any hangar that is not explicitly given the commercial status is a military hangar. Any magazine that is designed is a military magazine. And these will directly create military vessels. Now, military vessels have a few unique mechanics to them specifically. Number one, they require maintenance. Number two, they require deployment time. And number three, um, they act in ways where you need an entire logistics chain to make them move around and sort themselves out. So to explain what they are, we're going to go over their mechanics. So the first thing about military ships is that they require maintenance life. Now, maintenance life is basically the abstraction of the maintenance supplies on the ship, the average failure rates of the ship, and also um, max repair of the components. So, for example, an engine on this ship, if it's exploded, would or got damaged as it was doing things, would require 402 maintenance supply points. And that would be used on the stockpile. So, think of a ship kind of like a tank okay and that tank has like 20 percent of it is dedicated to maintenance supplies and over the course of it not being in a dry dock it will use those maintenance supplies as it goes now the more maintenance supplies you have the longer it can spend outside without breaking down and having issues this is what the maintenance life is the maintenance life clock or clock will go up as you do things and this is shown in naval organization so if we have a look over here and we go to this we can see a maintenance clock that is essentially what it is the more components you add the worse it gets the way you increase your maintenance life and increase msp is through engineering spaces uh, which directly help that and then also it, it, for bigger ships remember the, these are mainly for storing maintenance supplies but they also can help with maintenance life you can add in maintenance storage bays. So what is deployment time? We've discussed what maintenance time is and what maintenance clock is and maintenance supplies, but what is deployment time? Deployment time is the length of time that you may spend outside of the uh, area, for example, outside of a planet's orbit that has a population on it. So you require 10, I believe, you require a population on a planet. It can be, I think, any size. It may need to be 10 million. I haven't checked completely. 
but basically a population on the planet, if you have a ship in orbit that's military vessel, it will get shore leave. And because it will get shore leave, the deployment clock, like the maintenance clock, will go down. You want it as low as possible. As such, um, this means that when you're having vessels in areas, you don't want to be sending your ships on 10 year long voyages out into deep space with no population centers around. Then we have like stuff like deployment time, okay? So deployment time is set by yourself. So you can just change this number however you want. So if I create a new ship class, I can change the deployment time and this will directly affect it automatically. The ship will be changed. They, it will add its own civilian crew quarters. This basically represents the food supplies, the life support systems that are gonna be added to make sure that they can have a deployment time that's longer. This is in months, so if I want to do for uh, four years, I can do 48 months, and then you can increase that accordingly. Survey ships will generally have long deployment times, while normal military ships will have shorter deployment times because they're expected to not operate in deep space for as long, as combat is quite short. So that is what maintenance and also deployment time is like. Another thing about deployment time before we do move on is that... Um, is that the thing the thing about deployment time is that it's a very uh temperamental thing so basically you can increase it heavily but that will obviously increase your tonnage um and also depending on what you're doing it will increase more so obviously for example if you're firing a weapon you you will there's a chance for it to explode that's a maintenance issue but for deployment time if you're training or you're going for longer it will increase more and more so if you are in a trading admin command then it will multiply the amount of modifier of your deployment time so you can't train for 10 years straight um so yeah that, that that's essentially what it is and again as i said uh military weapons and military designs they can break down um as they fire uh, there's a one percent chance that anytime a missile launcher or an energy weapon fires um the missile launcher or the energy weapon will break down just 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 a fun fact for you there so that is essentially what a military vessel is it is essentially a vessel that has military components or components that define it as a military ship and as such require it to adhere to maintenance uh policy maintenance life and also deployment um and that's what it is next question we're going to ask is why are they used military ships are used for various things uh such as defending colonies uh defending um places such as important resource caches fuel supplies stuff like that they are also used on survey vessels for example or geological and gravitational survey sensors are military so survey vessels are military vessels uh they are used for uh orbital defense stations uh all this kind of stuff so for example you cannot have a you know, you cannot have a, 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 a ship or a, a station that's technically a station that is military, but you can have an engineless ship that you can tug around that will have weapons on it. And as long as it's in the orbit of a planet, it will be constantly maintained. So it is possible to have a military station, quote unquote, but you won't be able to build an industry because that's what a station basically does. A station, technically, if it's classed as a station, it'll be able to be built with planetary industry. And if it's not, it'll be need to be built in shipyard production they're also used for various other things such as uh defense amm support um convoy patrolling planetary protection the value increasing um fighter ground support roles all of these things that military ships are used for um to defend there are also other different components that affect that military ship so such as Tractor beams. You can't use a commercial ship to tractor beam a military ship, but you can use a you know a military ship tractor beam uh, to do that for a military ship. So, like the engines, a commercial engine can be put on a military ship, but you can't have a commercial jump drive jump a military engine or a military jump drive jump with a commercial engine. So keep that in mind. Um, the only thing that affects if it's a military vessel or not is its components so you can have commercial components on a military ship just to make sure you, no one's confused about that so that's basically what they are used 
Now we're going to talk about design considerations and extra stuff that may be important to you. We're not going to delve too deep into exactly how you want to design your vessels because that will be in later episodes. But in today's episode, we're going to be talking about design considerations. So generally, you the most important thing of a military ship is going to be its ability to be fast, its speed. Um, so, for example, this ship can go 4,000 kilometers a second. The reason I've said it as it can go 4,000 kilometers a second, and you'll notice these can also go 4,000 kilometers a second, is because it is a fleet standard speed, what we call FTS, or fleet standard speed. And a fleet standard speed means that all the ships in the fleet will go that speed. So what will happen is if you have a ship that is lower speed in the fleet with higher speed ships, it will always use the lowest uh, the slowest ship in the fleet for when calculating its fleet movement so you want to have a standard fleet speed that every ship can go at um, if you want to actually move that fleet efficiently and properly i know a lot of people are also confused exactly on best kinds of speed for commer for ion magnetic plasma plasma and also the rest um, so on screen i am going to put um, kind of what i think is best um, at least for the first early game mid game and how you generally want to increase it but overall what you want to do is basically every single time you get your next engine tech so for example if we go have a look at engine technologies so power and propulsion um, and we have a look at magnetic uh, you know we, we have a look at the next uh, drive which I haven't unlocked yet but for example a ion drive so if I go to complete it so ion drive technology, ion drives provides 12.5 power per HS of engine. So if you get an increase to 15 per power per HS of engine, then you increase the amount of speed your ship is going. But how do you determine, that's going to be a question asked, how do you determine what speed your ion, your vessel should go at the start? So here's the thing. If you're using beam weapons only, you need to be going very, very fast. If you're not using beam weapons, you can compromise. Now, Ion drives, generally, people want to go, you want to go about 5,000 kilometers to 6,000 kilometers a second on your ships. Um, and this will be listed out. Um, but you can, you obviously can compromise accordingly. These ships are 4,000 because I want to fit a lot of weapons on it. I want to have RP because this is for a AAR in this, in this situation. Um, for, for heavier vessels. So, for example, um, for example, heavier vessels or better tech vessels like Magneto Plasma and also internal confusion in all of that stuff, um, you are going to want to just increase it based off that. So if you get a 12% power increase per HS of your EP, increase the amount of speed your ship is going to go by accordingly. And that is going to help you out. So that's kind of how engine speed works. It's not uh, the slave map. I, I, there are lots of different kind of ideas of what's the best engine speed or what technology and how much how fast you should be going but generally you want to go as fast as you can get away with and then also be fuel efficient because you've got to balance that really it's about balancing um and in the, in the description below i'm going to put a, uh, a thing called a ship optimizer developed by ice ranger it's an absolutely awesome piece of software it uses java uh, and it basically allows you to optimize yourself vessel so you can find the best engine for your ship size for your tech you can find all of these amazing things so big shout out to him it's an amazing tool that i've even used for these vessels as we can see here next we're going to have a look at armor okay so armor is one of these things that you're not only going to want on commercial ships but you are going to want to consider on um on military ships so you can increase armor like you can increase deployment time and so one layer two layer three layers so every point in armor so i have an armor rating of five that means there's five layers of armor okay and they and they are 41 wide okay so as you have um better armor tech that will increase and and it will also save you tonnage and stuff like that so um there's also obviously shields so you can either go full armor and neglect shields, or you can go shields. Benefits of shields, they can recharge in combat. Um, they don't need to be repaired. Um, 
and they also will take they, they, they can deflect be better kinds of weapons and stuff like that um but armor is obviously a lot easier to add onto ships and you don't have to have other considerations of designing a new kind of technology and doing all this kind of stuff so um i'm going to kind of show you now what this armor looks like so if we have a look at uh you know, if we have a look at this ship, armor status, as you can see here, I have six layers of armor and then they are going that far across. So this ship, it's going 97 across. So 97 layers. And as you can see here, basically what will happen is if we have a missile that does four damage, it will go, it will penetrate, it will hit the armor here, then here, then here, then here. And if another missile comes in, it will go like here here like it, that's the whole idea is it's penetrating and once it gets past here it's going to start penetrating and actually killing components so that's really what you have to consider in that in that situation right so this is why squared warheads are the best so four um nine sixteen stuff like that are best because they are going to always get one extra layer in so you're gonna you're, you're gonna penetrate in and it's gonna get that one extra layer because of that's how the missile spread works for them. There are other kinds of weapons that don't have that. So like a, a particle lance can just go straight through. So if it does six damage, it'll just go boom, 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 boom. And your armor's gone in that area. And then they can pen they can keep shooting through that and penetrating into your ship um, accordingly. Now, obviously, it's randomized for where it's going to hit. But it can really start whipping you apart. Because if they, if they did 12 damage a shot, it's going to pen it's going to penetrate six layers of armor. And then it's going to hit internally six times so you have to kind of balance how much armor you want to put on your ship and how much savings it's going to be because armor is considerable amount of mass that you're going to really put on ship and you need to schedule how much you are going to put on um other than that obviously there are things like sensors and em and all this there's there's so much so much in military ship design and i will go into it more and more in the days to come but um, this is just a basic overview of design considerations, why they use, what are military vessels, and all that stuff. Just kind of get you into the idea of what you're going to be looking at, um, ideally. Um, then in the next episodes, we're going to be going over actually designing a military ship, understanding the ship philosophy, and all that kind of stuff. I hope you have enjoyed the episode. Please just like, comment, subscribe. It really does help out. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.